In this video, I want to summarise all of the geometrical formulae that you need to be aware of going into the exam. Now that's going to include areas, volumes, perimeters, surface areas that you need to be aware of. Some of these formulae you need to know, some of them you will be given in the exam. Okay, so let's just start off with a rectangle. Okay, so a rectangle, you're going to have a base and a height. Okay, so your base and your height. Now, I'm going to abbreviate those to just B and H, just for brevity. Just uh, make my life a little bit easier when I'm drawing the diagrams. So base and height. And here is my rectangle. So the area is just your base times your height. Okay? Now, the perimeter of a rectangle would just then be the base plus the height plus another base plus the height again, working our way around the perimeter of the shape. So your perimeter would be two lots of the base plus two lots of the height, which you could factorise into two lots of the base plus height if you wanted to. Okay? Um, but we'll leave it there. So that's the rectangle. Right, let's go for the parallelogram next. So parallelogram. Two pairs of parallel sides. Okay, where that angle is the same as that angle, and that angle is the same as that angle. Okay, so the base is the length of that side there. Okay, whereas the height in question is the perpendicular height. Now, what I mean by the perpendicular height is that it makes a right angle with that base, okay? So that's what I mean by perpendicular height. Uh, the word perpendicular means at right angles to, so it's at right angles to the base. So it's not that diagonal length, okay? The perpendicular height that you want is that length there. So that the area, now I'm just gonna abbreviate area to capital A, is the same as it is for the rectangle. It is the base times the height. Now, I'm not going to bother including the uh, perimeter here because I would have to know that length there, okay, um, in order to work it out. Now, if I knew um, this distance and that distance, okay, then I would be able to use Pythagoras to work out that length, okay? But I'm just going to leave it off this uh, summary for the moment because if I don't know those I don't have a formula for it at the moment but I could work it out as necessary given the information right triangle okay so a, just a generic triangle now I know that how I've drawn it makes it look like an isosceles triangle, but it doesn't have to be, okay? Now the base is that length there. And again, we're going to go for the perpendicular height. Okay, so it is the height from, the length from that point there down to the base. So it's not that length, it's not that length. So the area is one half times the base times the height. The perimeter would of course be the length of those three sides added together if I knew all three sides. Okay, So that is the area of a triangle. Now this perpendicular height idea can sometimes put people off because 
of how triangles can be drawn. If you had a triangle that looked like this, let's say, then this is the base, and the height, the perpendicular height, is that length there. Okay, and the area formula, half base times height, still applies here. Okay, the reason why it still applies is because actually it is one half of a parallelogram that we had here. Okay, so it's one half of the base times the height. So that area formula still applies. Okay, so that's your triangles. Now, the circle. Okay, now for our circle, this length is the radius r. Okay, and so the area is given by pi r squared. The perimeter we refer to as the circumference. So this is the circumference. circumference. Spell it right. There we are. Now the circumference is 2 pi r. Now that's precisely the same as pi times the diameter. Now a diameter is all the way through, right? So that's your diameter, and the radius is just half of your diameter. So you can just write that as pi times d, and some people learn it that way. Personally, I use 2 pi r. That's the first thing that comes to my mind, um, because ordinarily you're given the radius in those types of questions. Not always, but um, that's just how um, my brain immediately goes to 2 pi r, because quite often we are given the radius. Okay, right, let's go to some volumes then, right? So let's go to the cuboid. Okay, so a cuboid. This isn't going to be particularly good. Let's try that. Okay, that'll do. It's not very good, but there you are. Okay, so for a cuboid, you would have a... Um, so they sometimes write it as length, breadth, and height. Okay, so um, you might have a length, then a breadth, and then a height. Okay? Height's very common. I mean, the idea of, like, when you say length and breadth, kind of like thinking that's how long it is. Breadth is kind of how deep it is. Um, so you can think of that as another word for how, de how deep it is. So your volume, and I'll write it as capital V, will be length times breadth times height. Okay? Now, if you wanted the surface area... So, assuming that it's a closed box, let's call the surface area capital S. Then you would have the base times height of this side, so we just shaded in that side there, that face. But you've got that and its opposite face as well, so it's back. So there's two lots of the breadth times the height. You've then got the length times the height, so the area of that rectangle, and there's a front and back to that one as well. So it's two lots of those. So two lots of the length times the height. And then you've got the top and the bottom, which is the breadth times the length. And there's two of those. So that would be the surface area of the cuboid. Now you could then factorise that and say well that's two lots of breadth times height 
plus length times height plus breadth times length. You could write it that way. So that's a cuboid. Okay, what about a cylinder? So a cylinder, looking like this, with a radius, so of its top circle, okay, top circle, then it's got a radius R, and it's got a height H. So its volume is given by the area of the top, so the pi r squared, times by its height. So pi r squared h. Now, this is true of um, any prism. So you can generalize this uh, to look at a prism. So if you have um, kind of some shape on the top, and then it is like that, let's say, uh, then this is H, and this has a surface area of A, so that's A. Then the volume is just going to be A times H. Kind of like you can kind of think of it like a tree trunk. So um, if you've got, so I know that um, a lot of trees are kind of like circular, okay, um, but and are cylindrical, uh, but not all are. Uh, so if they've kind of got a more wibbly wobbly shape around, but you've got a uh, chunk of it, uh, then it would be the surface area at the top times by how tall it is. Now, the surface area of the cylinder, well, it's got two circles, pi r squared and pi r squared. So it's got two pi r squared. Okay, that's the top and the bottom. And then you've got the wraparound part. Now, the wraparound part is actually a rectangle that has been bent right round. So, if you think of it as a rectangle that's been bent round, it will have h as its height, but its length will actually be the circumference of the circle, so 2 pi r. So the surface area, you've got two circles, so 2 pi r squared plus the area of this part, so 2 pi r h. Okay, and that would be the surface area of your cylinder. Okay, so that's the cylinder. Right, so everything that you've seen so far we need to know, okay, or need to be able to calculate. Whenever I'm uh, working out the surface area of a cuboid, I don't really remember it as a formula, okay? I don't remember it as S equals two lots of BH plus LH plus BL. I get given the question and then I work it out there on the day. So I go, right, I need two of those, front and back, two of those, side and side, two of those, top and bottom. Okay, so I don't really bother remembering this. And I don't really bother remembering this as a formula, 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. Um, again, I work it out on the day. Okay, um, it really depends on what's useful to you. I don't remember, you know, I haven't got, I don't, don't go in my head, oh, perimeters 2b plus 2h, or 2 lots of b plus h. That's not, that's not there. Is something that I work out on the day. But the area formula, b times h, area is b times h, area is half bh, pi r squared and 2 pi r, these are ones that I do remember. These are ones that you should learn. Length times breadth times h, uh, pi r squared h. Okay? So these are the ones we need to know. 
Now, what about the ones that we might get asked to talk about or use? So, we have the sphere. Okay, quite a difficult drawing, one of these. Um, here we go. <laughs> it kind of looks like the circle. So, let's uh, give it some kind of dimension. So, here is my sphere. And here is its centre, and it's got a radius of R. OK? So, the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi R cubed. Now, as I said, this formula is given to you in the exam. Uh, but it is one that is worth knowing as you work through mathematics. So it is worthwhile having. The surface area, so its total surface area, is actually given by 4 pi r squared. So it's actually, strangely enough, 4 lots of the area of the circle wrapped around the outside. So that's your sphere. OK. And last one is the cone. Okay, so cone, let's draw it here. Okay, so first of all, it's got a circular base with a radius of r, and it's got a height, perpendicular height of h. Okay, so the volume of the cone is one third pi r squared times h. Now, the surface area of a cone, the curved bit, okay, so the curved section is given to you by pi times r times l. Now l is this length here. Okay, so that diagonal length. So the surface area would be the curved section plus the area of the circle on the bottom. So plus pi r squared. OK, and so here you have a summary of the formulae for uh, areas, um, perimeters, volumes, surface areas that we need to be aware of, that we need to be able to use. Remember the ones for the sphere and the cone, uh, we can expect to be given those if required in the exam. Um, but... It, they are worth knowing if you're going to take maths on further. So if you want to take it up to A-level maths uh, and further maths, they are definitely worth knowing.